Guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video of Car Spec Garage. Today, we're talking about the C8 Corvette. Mine is the Z06, and we're going to get in and have a frank conversation about car flipping or flipping the C8 Corvettes, um, being either the Stingray, the Z06, and the other ones that are coming. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, I want to first just give a disclaimer. This video is not meant to insult people, is not meant to um, make anyone upset. And these are the Corvette enthusiasts. Uh, these are the ones that have been in this brand for a very long time. I have not. This is my very first Corvette I've ever owned. Uh, the first time I drove a Corvette, the first time I sat in one that I can remember as an adult, um, from childhood all the way up to, to where I'm at today has been this car when I took delivery of it. I never test drove one, I never sat in one, uh, but I knew I had to have one. So just as a disclaimer, I'm not here to upset anybody. I'm here to get frank with you though and help you to understand from an investor side of um, the coin, I guess you'd call it, um, why Flipping cars, no matter if it's a Corvette, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, or whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is. It's not, we're not bad people or whatever you want to call it. So let's dive straight in to the Corvette, um, specifically the C8 and the flippers out there and go from there. So let me give you a quick background of me so you'll kind of understand where I'm coming from. Um, have been in the technology space pretty much um, since college. Uh, I, I love the technology space. I love anything that has technology in it. It's, it's just a passion of mine. So I was able to start three businesses through my career uh, with my business partner and sell all three of those. And so I've had, you know, I've been very lucky in a lot of respect um, building businesses uh, and being able to sell them. Of course, there's got to be some luck involved in that. But I say all this when we start a business, when an entrepreneur starts a business, when a um, investor of cars or stocks or whatever the case may be, it doesn't matter. These are just things that people buy low or buy at a certain price and sell at a higher price to make a profit. You want to capitalize in areas that makes the most sense. And so remember that word capitalize. That is important through this conversation. So all three of the businesses that I started, built, ran, and sold, all capitalized on a specific market with a specific service. It was something that we focused on, looked around, and figured that's where the business needs to go. That's why we need to start this business in this space because of this reason, What's you know whatever that reason is. Okay, same thing is going to go with a C8 Corvette, it's going to go with a C7 Corvette, um, you know, all the way down to the, in the 60s, Corvettes in the 60s. Uh, I've had a good, I've had great conversations with Corvette enthusiasts or Corvette owners. Now, I'm not a Corvette enthusiast, first Corvette I ever owned. And I will tell you this, I never really understood the passion that people have for these cars. It's absolutely crazy in a very, very good way. I mean, I've talked to Corvette owners of 30 plus years and older that have owned probably every generation of these cars. And they do take offense when somebody buys the car and flips it and makes more money. And I get that. I even had one guy said that you're taking, you know, said that the car flippers are taking advantage of people. And I'm, they're not taking advantage of people. Listen, these are luxury items. That's all this thing is. Even at MSRP, it's luxury items. Even 20% below MSRP, it's still a luxury item, and it's going to be a luxury item forever. It doesn't matter the price. This is not a daily, it's not a car that somebody's buying daily and driving it. These are $120,000 cars, on, at least on the Z06 side. So I don't think flippers are taking advantage of people. They are taking advantage or capitalizing, that's that word, capitalizing in a market that is growing and that 
Chevrolet is not making a lot of these cars right now for whatever reasons. That can be constraints on parts. That can be they're just trying to um, keep, the, keep the, the numbers down low so that the value of these cars are going up. I mean, listen, I, I know the haters out there, um, and I hate to say haters, they're just people that are very passionate, right? They're passionate people that want these cars. They don't want to see the price driven up, high up. But really, you got to look at Chevrolet on this one. Um, here's the reason why it's not a bad thing. When you look at all the Corvettes out there, minus the C8 Corvette, uh, what I have learned is those are muscle cars. Uh, they're incredible muscle cars, and they, Chevrolet has always done a good job with building Corvette, but they've been muscle cars. Chevrolet needed to compete against Ferrari. They needed to compete against Lamborghini. They had to do that. So what did they do? They stepped it up and they built this C8, Stingray. And then they built the Z06 and then so on and so forth as the, the, the newer models come out or the different models come out. It's going to only get better, faster, whatever the case is. Well, now, like it or not, they are out of the muscle car realm. They are now sitting in supercar exotic realm. And when you're in the supercar exotic realm, you're in a different different ball game. And I have talked to many enthusiasts on Ferrari, Lamborghini, Audi R8s, uh, Bugattis, McLarens. These are all supercars, right? I'm not talking about hyper. I'm talking about supercars. And this is one. I honestly believe deep down that this Z06 and the C8 Stingrays, these are supercar vehicles now. Chevrolet has done it. They, they've crossed the line. What you got to understand in, in the Ferrari market, the Lamborghini market, the McLaren market, the Porsche market, all of these markets with these supercars running everywhere, people are going to buy them, they're going to hold them, and they're going to sell them. That is just the way it is. The day of holding one for the rest of their lives is just not it or having maybe different models but not maybe flipping a one or two to get to another one. It's just going to happen. Uh, that's where this car is at today. I know that the Corvette enthusiast doesn't want to hear that, uh, but that is just really, it's just reality. It's the way that Chevrolet has positioned this car and has built this car. And this car is absolutely amazing. I've owned R8s. I've, owned, I've got a Porsche as well. I've got this car and all of, I mean, this, this is by far the fastest, the sexiest looking car I've probably ever owned and I absolutely love it and I haven't even broken it in yet it's only got 305 miles on it and I've owned it for about a month now or tomorrow will be a month so where I'm going with this is you know I watched Facebook uh, post and I've even posted like hey I'm thinking I might sell this car um, you know capitalize on the market sell it because I am an entrepreneur I am an investor and I may invest in stocks, I may invest in cars, I may invest in businesses, but my, my end result of, uh, for me or any entrepreneur, any investor is to buy something and to sell it and make money. It's not to try to pull people or take advantage of people because if they want to buy it, they're going to buy it. That's not taking advantage of people. It's not like I'm buying a shortage of baby formula and I would take that and then go out and sell it on the street for more money because nobody can get baby formula. That would be a horrible thing to do to society. Buying a Corvette, buying a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, holding it and flipping it and making money is not this horrible thing in society, but the Facebook people will let you think that. And it's just, it's kind of comical. You read some of the posts out there. I hate flippers. I hope flippers die. They're scum of the earth and all that. And maybe they can't even really afford this car and they're just trying to maybe talk the price, the value down on these cars so they can afford it. Maybe there are true 30 plus year enthusiasts that are just really just mad uh, that investors are doing that. So I would just say, when you see these cars on the market being sold, if, even if it's a dealer selling it for over MSRP, or if it's an investor that's flipping it over MSRP, of course, you know, don't, don't take it so personally. It's just, it's not, it's just business to them. And I know it's not business to a lot of the Corvette enthusiasts, but at, at the end of the day, this is just a, a, a vehicle, you know, no pun intended to make money. 
if you have an investor that wants to buy the car. You, you can watch many, many car channels on YouTube and they buy cars, they hold them, they sell them to get another car to move up, like maybe somebody sells this to get to the E-Ray and they get from the E-Ray to the next version of the car and they're buying and selling them and they're making money along the way and there's really nothing wrong with that. So I know that's not what you want to hear, but this video is, is not meant to make anybody upset. It's just kind of, for me as an investor, as an entrepreneur, it's just kind of tell you what I think um, far as investing. I don't care if it's a Corvette or a piece of stock that I buy and sell. It doesn't matter. Um, or a house, right? A lot of people buy homes and they fix them up, rehab them, and they sell them. That happens as well. So I would just say kind of, you know, be easy a little bit on people. Um, if, if you don't like that they're flipping a car, that's fine. I get it. There's a lot of things I don't like that people do as well, but I'm not going to wish them ill will. I'm not going to wish that they were dead or say they're scum of the earth or whatever the case is. So I would just say everybody with these C8s and all these people out there investing and flipping these cars, everybody just needs to settle down just a little bit and just know, and just, and, and it's almost kind of like a reality check, right? Is just know that people are going to buy things and sell things. And in this case, what we're talking about is the, this absolutely beautiful piece of machinery that Chevrolet has made. Um, I'm just incredibly impressed with it. So to kind of wrap it up, just everybody just take a big, deep breath and calm down. Uh, the market will correct itself. Eventually, Chevrolet will be building these in mass quantities, and all the prices will kind of fix themselves. Or who knows, maybe the prices still, still go, go up. I mean, you never really know. We, we got years to figure this out. Um, and so for right now, it's kind of a race. For some people are going to buy these cars, had allocations, held them for a while, and they're going to sell them. Some people are going to keep them. I know I posted a few times when I did get the allocation thinking, oh, I'm going to sell it. And I would reach out on Facebook and put out on the, the group, you know, the, all the, the groups, the Corvette groups and kind of gauge people's interest. And man, did I, I mean, some of the things hurt my feelings, but it, you know, I, I just, again, let's take a deep breath. So the biggest question that I get from a lot of people that have reached out to me or that I have reached out to them just to talk is, are you selling this car? Are you going to be a flipper? Well, I'm an investor. I'm an entrepreneur. I like to make money. That's what I do for a living. Uh, that if you work, you work to make money. That's what you do for a living so that we can afford these incredible pieces of machinery. I don't care if it's a Corvette, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, a Bugatti, a Porsche, or whatever the case is. So Am I going to sell my car? I don't know. At first I said I was, now, then I've said I'm not, and now I said I am. And then every time I look at it or get in it, I'm like, I'm not selling this thing. This is a work of art. Um, it, it's absolutely incredible. If I moved up to a Ferrari, I'd pay double this price um, for, you know, for maybe even a, a, a few years older Ferrari. And then I'm going to have the expense of a Ferrari that is nothing like to to run where this is not even half the cost to um, run this vehicle compared to a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or even an Audi R8, definitely McLaren, Bugattis and all those things. So um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna sell this or not. I really, I, I'm not yet, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm gonna hold it for quite a while. I'm a month into the ownership of this car. It's got 305 miles on it. So I'm just gonna kind of just enjoy it and take it to the car shows and drive it sparingly and keep the miles down on it and, um, and decide a little later where the market goes. Who knows, in six months, this market, they may pump out 15,000 more of these cars and then the market settles down and then we see down the road, does the value of these cars, are they going up or are they gonna just kind of do like every other one and just kind of drop down in price? I know Ferrari, some go up, some don't, some stay even, um, things like that. So. I would just say again to recap, please, everybody, let's just take a big, deep breath. These are investment um, items for some people. Um, call them car flippers, call them investors, call them whatever you want, scum, whatever. But I would just really, all joking aside, just take a deep breath. It, it, it's a car. And um, some people are just going to sell, sell them and some people are going to keep them. And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, period. 
I'll tell you one thing before we go. What is a wrong answer is a Corvette dealer that will say, hey, you want an allocation? Yes, all right. And then they call you when it's going into production and they say, hey, listen, or when, when it's been built, hey, it's gonna be 20,000 more. Now that is wrong. Dealers should not do that. If they're going to mark these cars up, mark them up and tell, and tell the owner at the beginning so he or she can move on. If they don't wanna spend the markup, that is great, good for them. Hold off until you can get one at MSRP. So, um, so yeah, so that's the video. I just wanted to kind of, just kind of get my thoughts, be a little frank with you um, about my thoughts on the Corvette C8 market and where we are today. Um, who knows what will happen in the next six months, 12 months, four years from now with these cars. Um, do the values hold or they start dropping? Who knows? So until the next video, make it a great day. Try to be nice to people on Facebook.